Hey friend, Heather Creekmore here. I'm glad you're listening to the Compared to Who show today. Today I'm continuing a conversation about spiritual warfare. Yes, it's big. It's deep. Maybe a little heavy too. I really want you to go listen to the first episode before you listen to this one because I set the stage for just giving you the theological background to really understand from scripture, the whole concept of the spiritual world and what we are really dealing with when we talk about the spiritual world versus the physical world. So go and listen to that one first. Hey, I want to know, have you thought about signing up for the Body Image Freedom Framework yet? Okay, here's the deal. If you're stuck and you just keep fighting your body image issues as if they are issues about your body and you know that the next diet is going to fix it for you or the next exercise or if you could just, you know, buckle down and and get good and find the discipline and find the strength again. Friend, I have said all those things. I know all those things. I get it. But this isn't a physical battle. Your body image issues are spiritual issues. And if you want to be free, you need to start fighting them as spiritual issues. And I'm giving you great help, I hope, this week and last week on the show to help you start doing that. But some of you are going to need more. And if you need more, what are you waiting for? Sign up for the course, sign up for the coaching, do the whole thing, bite the bullet. Let's go. Let's get you free. Let's get your after story where you are like those testimonies I shared last week where you are saying, I cannot believe how different my life is. I cannot believe how energized I am. I cannot believe that I am not constantly obsessing over my weight anymore. I cannot believe that I'm not thinking about food and stressing about my jean size all day long. I want that to be your story. If you want that to be your story too, I hope you will go to improvebodyimage.com, find out all the information and get signed up. I got to tell you, friend, the spiritual warfare stuff is real. The sign up website has had so many issues that have been checked and double checked by computer people and it's still struggling. So if you had a problem, you went on to sign up and you had a struggle, please try again or just send me an email directly, heather at comparedto.me. Let me also tell you that the enemy does not want you to do this program. And I feel weird saying that, but it's the truth because this program is going to bring you closer to Jesus no matter what. And that's the one thing he doesn't want in your life. So go check it out. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. So in our last episode, we talked about this reality that one third of the angels that God created really rebelled with Satan, turned against him. And became dark angels or demons. We also talked about how, remember, if you are a Christian, if you believe in Jesus, if you follow him, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You cannot be demon possessed. So it's not like those scary exorcism movies where, you know, the people's heads spin the whole way around, like that kind of thing. That can't happen to you. Okay, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. There are not demons living inside of you. But you can be oppressed. There can be demonic activity around you that is lying to you, misleading you. And really remember the scripture that talks about what Satan's goal is to steal, kill and destroy that is working actively to ruin your life. Now, let's just be real, friends. 
a lot of us believe <laughs> that there are forces at work that are trying to ruin our lives, right? Maybe, okay, for my younger folks, maybe there's a kid at school, a girl at school, a boy at school. <laughs> maybe it's your husband that you feel like is trying to ruin your life, right? Maybe it's your boss or your job or the economy or politics, right? If we just had a different governor, we just had a different president, right? There's lots of things that we blame for trying to ruin our lives. And I don't want to be one of those people that's always like, blame the devil, blame the devil, blame the devil. But I also don't want to be ignorant of this reality that the devil has one job to steal, kill and destroy. And to say it, he has a job is kind of not a great way to say it. But that is the job he has given himself, right? He wants to rule this world and have more people following him, living in obedience to him than living in obedience to God, right? He wants to turn God's followers away from God towards him. He wants to capture those who have not yet decided to follow Jesus. He wants to capture them and have them be followers of his. It is a war. You are in a battle every single day. Do you live like that? You see, like my husband, he was a Marine. Oh, actually, you never say was a Marine. <laughs> he was he was an active duty Marine. He is a Marine. Uh, but he likes to talk about this a lot, right? When you are a Marine... You spend a lot of time preparing for battle. In fact, you probably spend for in most seasons, right? Maybe it was different, would have been different if this was during World War II or something like that. But he spent more time preparing for battle than he did actually engaging in battle. And yet, there wasn't a day where he wasn't training. There wasn't a day when he wasn't thinking about the battle. There wasn't a day when he wasn't aware of the battle and that he could get the call to have to go fight, to have to go go be on the front lines to do something, right? So friend, are you aware that you're in a battle? You are in a battle for your soul. The enemy does not want to just let you follow God and thrive and flourish as a daughter of the king. No, he is going to do every single thing possible to stop you from thriving and flourishing as a daughter of the king. He wants to distract you, which I think he can do through body image issues. He wants to deceive you into believing that you aren't really loved or you're not really loved as much as she is or she is or she is because she's prettier than you are and she's thinner than you are and she's got a better life than you do. God must not love you as much. He wants to lie to you about that. He wants to destroy your life and your relationship with God. You are in a battle. I love how Paul Tripp talks about the passage in Ephesians, and it's Ephesians 6. Um, I'll go ahead and read that first. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Okay. You may even have that verse memorized, right? Or at least the first part. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, but okay, like it, it's ignoring reality to miss the rest of that verse, right? But against the rulers, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Okay, y'all, like that's the demonic world, right? Paul straight up is saying, we don't wrestle against other people. We wrestle against the demonic world. But I love how he says this. He talks about how, like, right before that in Ephesians, like, we've got teaching from Paul on marriage and on family and on parenting. And he talks about how, like, people think that this is kind of out of place. Like, really? Like, you know, why the spiritual warfare verse after the marriage passage? And he says, it's not out of place because the reality is every part of our life is spiritual war. The spiritual war lives where we live. Life is war. 
So are you acting like you're at war? Are you, and you guys probably, if you grew up in church like I did, you learned about this in elementary school. Are you putting on the full armor of God? <laughs> okay. And I, Ephesians 6, 10 and 11, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. How do you stand against the schemes of the devil? How do you stand up to the demonic? You put on that armor of God right? You've got that breastplate of righteousness. And oh, I can't wait to do an episode on righteousness. But it's not righteousness because you followed the diet well. It's not righteousness because you got to your goal weight. It's righteousness because you are in right standing with God because of Jesus alone, period, end of sentence. Nothing else you can do will make you righteous before him. This is your breastplate of righteousness. This is that piece of armor that is covering your heart, right? The most important thing to protect, right? It's covering your heart from the lies that want to penetrate your heart, right? So again, taking this to body image from those lies that are telling your heart, you're just not good enough because your body isn't good enough. You're just not enough and loved enough because you don't weigh what you want to weigh, Right, all of those are lies, and the breastplate of righteousness, this this piece of metal that covers you is Jesus' righteousness, protecting you from those fiery darts of the enemy. You have to have the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Are you reading your Bible every day, my friend? Are you? Because that's where the truth comes from. Instagram has this whole other truth. You don't need that truth. You need the truth of scripture. Otherwise, you're going to get taken out by the, those who are battling this war against you, right? Are your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace? You have the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one is what Ephesians 6.16 says. The helmet of your salvation, right? You protect your brain. You protect your head with your salvation, the hope of your salvation, knowing that ultimately your inheritance is in heaven, that Jesus has sealed you. Nothing can separate you from his love. And then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is how we use that sword to rightly divide the word of truth. We use that sword to take out anything that is not of him. We're going to talk more about this battle right after this break. So I want to tread very carefully with this next statement, but I also want to be honest. Most of us who are really, really struggling in the ditch of body image issues are struggling in our spiritual battle. Our walk is not where we want it to be or where it needs to be for us to be equipped to fight. And that's a key component of what we work through in body image coaching. Most of my clients will say, I came in here to work on body stuff and I actually ended up getting closer to the Lord and kind of working through my own spiritual stuff. And that's really where the battle lies because I do believe all of our battles are, like scripture says, not about flesh and blood, but they're this battle, a much bigger unseen battle against what God says, God's truth, and what Satan wants us to believe, what Satan wants us to follow. I mean, just think about our battle to believe God's definition of beauty over the world's definition of beauty. Now we can say things like the world and culture, but remember Satan, the dragon is the prince of this world. So whenever I'm saying the world or culture, I'm really saying Satan's dominion, Satan's kingdom, right? And now when I put it like that, it feels really yicky to be like, oh yeah, it is kind of strange that I have a hard time not believing Satan's definition of beauty over God's definition of beauty. Like, I get that. Like, that's like, oh, boy, oh, I feel a little lame saying that that's my struggle. Like, right there with you, my friend. But but let's just be honest. That's it. Right? Satan is the deceiver. I heard recently that God creates and Satan plagiarizes, right? What God created our bodies as good. And Satan 
plagiarizes this form of goodness, this form of beauty, but it's not what God created. Okay, so let's go back and just get really practical here for a second. I talked about oppression, and I don't want to leave you hanging with that. For some of you, there's just a lot of buzz around all the time. Okay, now, from my understanding of studying this, like I said, I went to a conference this summer that kind of helped clarify some things. Let me first explain and emphasize that not all of your body image, food issues, eating disorder stuff, it's not all attributable to the demonic. I think it's awesome to look at the example of Jesus when Jesus healed people through the New Testament. Sometimes he healed them physically, sometimes he healed them emotionally, and sometimes he had to drive a demon out. So for the ways we struggle, there can be lots of different underlying issues. It's not always a demon issue. It may be, though, a demon issue with other issues going on. And again, let me emphasize, when I say a demon issue, I don't mean that you're possessed. I mean that you have this buzz around you. Now, let me explain this more. It is sin in our lives that always leaves room for the demonic to work. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's something that you're actively sinning in, That, ha- but, but any sin opens the door right? So it could have been something that you did a long time ago, maybe like something really overt and simple to figure out, like um, like maybe you experimented with Ouija boards, or maybe you were part of a cult, um, or maybe it's a family bloodline thing where your family members have been part of an occult, and there's been actual curses um, or pledges made like kind of over your soul. There's all, there's a whole like messy world of all of that that is very real for a lot of people. There's a author named John Mark Comer who wrote an awesome book on rest, but he talks about how his wife uh, had cancer and they actually found out that there had been some vow like decades earlier made by someone in the family that was like a curse against like the firstborn daughter from every family. Um, so there's that, that stuff exists. It's again, it's not fun or light to talk about, but it exists. So it's worth kind of exploring that. And you can, we're going to talk about the authority you have as a believer here in just a minute, but you can rescind those vows. Um, you can reject those curses, those sorts of things. Right. But, but it might not be an actual like witchcraft kind of thing. Um, although like, let's just be honest in the old Testament, um, there's a passage that talks about rebellion as witchcraft, right? So, so you know, it, it's, it's messy. You know, you might have, there's some yoga classes, y'all, they're straight up evil, right? Um, you've, you've gone into a room and you felt like the presence of evil there, chances are there was evil there, okay? It's not just, it wasn't bad tacos. If you felt it, chances are it was there. And so, so recognizing that there's different ways that these demons can attach themselves to us. There's also vows that we make to ourselves, right? Like, um, like, like things that have happened to us, maybe even traumatic things, right? And, and we're not being punished for those traumatic things that happen. But as a response to those traumatic things, we make vows like I'm always going to take care of myself. So I never have to be afraid again. And the problem with vows like that are that God doesn't want us to take care of ourselves. I mean, he de- like don't take that out of context. <laughs> but but God wants to be our protector. He wants us to surrender to him. He doesn't want us to be afraid because we think we have everything under control. He wants us to fear not because he is strong, he is good and he has us. And those are two different things, right? It's one is reliance on self and one is reliance on God. So there's all kinds of different ways than this that this can look. There are agreements we have made where, like I think we talked about this last time, where we're actually like, we're just agreeing with the enemy. We're like, okay, yes, you're right. I'm a loser. I, you know, this is my issue. And like the demonic force that is telling us these awful things about us, we actually have befriended it, (laughs) befriended him like, okay, yeah, you're right. You know, please come beat me up some more. Please come shame me. Please come tell me how ugly and awful I am. And and this, this happens. And most of the time it happens in a way where we are not acknowledging the fact that 
this is a spiritual issue, that this is a spiritual force, that this is part of that big battle, right? It just happened and it's there and we don't know what all this buzz is around us, but we know it exists. If you are feeling that buzz, let me kind of steer you down a path, right? Now, I think that there are lots of people out there that are very gifted in praying against demonic things. I, I love the fact that the friends I know that do this, and I do a little bit of this, and I'm happy to, you know, if if you are involved in one of my coaching programs and this comes up, I am happy to pray with you and kind of go down this road. Um, if I'm working with you and I've gotten to know you a little bit, I'm happy, I'm happy to explore how we can get rid of spiritual junk that is around you. But this is not like, again, and not, not like a TV scene, right? This is not like screaming and yelling and throwing yourself on the floor. It's not that at all, right? There, there's a very calm way that we can exert the authority that Jesus has given us. And I think one of the best scripture verses to reference here is Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Do we take that literally that we should go like barefoot walking on scorpions? I live in Texas. There's scorpions everywhere. I actually don't think that's what this verse means. (laughs) I think we're back to thinking about serpents and scorpions as these evil forces, and we have authority to tread on them. You have the authority in Jesus Christ to do what Jesus did and say, be gone, depart from me. In fact, we don't have to fear the demonic at all because we have the authority through Jesus Christ. Like I shared last time, Caroline Duner said when the demons were flaring against these new age people, followers, how much more should we as Jesus followers call on the name of Jesus? So when you feel like you're being pestered by a spirit, be it the spirit of religion, asking you about your food rules or the spirit of fear, just making you really afraid around your body or what people think of your body or any spirit that is lying to you, tormenting you, pestering you that will not leave you alone to believe God's truth. If this is your battle, call on the name of Jesus and simply say, in Jesus name, you have to go. I know this is not of the Lord in Jesus name. You have to go. Let's go back to that passage we read in the last episode from Corinthians, from second Corinthians for though we walk in the flesh. We are not waging war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. If you're having thoughts that don't align with the Bible, Don't just write it off to, this is my thoughts. No, no, no. They could be influenced. (laughs) They probably are influenced. Take them captive and do not try to battle the demonic thoughts about your body with another diet. Do not try to battle demonic thoughts about your body not being good enough, about your body being wrong, about your body being the kind of body that no one will ever love, about your body being so messed up, who could ever want you? Demons are mean. And sometimes people say things that are mean because they're influenced by demons too, right? Demons can use other people to take you out and their words to try to take you out, right? Don't underestimate that. Don't agree with them and don't try to battle these physical things that are said in physical ways. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh, friend, it's a lot. (laughs) You might have to listen to this one twice, but I want you to be free. I really do. I hope you hear my heart. I want you to be free. Now, I recently heard a teaching by Tim Keller on Matthew 12, 45. And if you're not familiar with this story, it's a story that um, is in the New Testament where Jesus is talking about how they drove out an evil spirit. And the Pharisees actually did drive out evil spirits all the time. But how they drove out an evil spirit and the house gets cleaned up, I think is the way it reads in um in the Bible, and then seven more evil spirits move in. Uh, I'll just read you the passage here from Matthew 12, 43 to 45. It says, 
When a defiling evil spirit is, is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis, some unsuspecting soul it can be devil. When it doesn't find anyone, it says, I'll go back to my old haunt. On return, it finds a person spotlessly clean, but vacant. It then runs out and rounds up seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all move in, whooping it up. That person ends up far worse off than if he'd never gotten cleaned up in the first place. And then Jesus says, that's what this generation is like. You may think you have cleaned out the junk from your lives and gotten ready for God, but you weren't hospitable to my kingdom message. And now all the devils are moving back in. And I heard Keller talk about this and it was really an amazing sermon. I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but he explained it in a way that I thought was super applicable to our body image and food struggles. And the way he explained it was this, there are other ways to be free right? You can go find a recovery program for your addiction. You can find a diet and fitness program that helps you feel better about your body for a little while. There are all kinds of solutions in our world that can work for a little bit. But any solution that is not a gospel solution, any solution that doesn't ultimately point the person back to their biggest problem, which is the problem with sin that we all need a savior for, any solution that keeps them more focused on a prize that's not Jesus. And I'm going to say that's what a lot of our diet and fitness solutions do. They keep us focused on a prize that is a better body And we would get glory for ourselves from having the better body or get freedom and rest from body shame through a better body. But that's not freedom and rest that comes from Christ. And so any of those solutions are not ultimately solutions that are going to work in the long term. And I love how he explained that like these solutions can help us clean up our lives, right? Just like the Matthew passage talks about, like the demon It has to leave, but he comes back and he finds the guy's house is all cleaned up. But because there is nothing else living there, because the house is cleaned up, but vacant, there is room for the spirit to go find seven other spirits and help them move in too. And so Keller offers this, and I think this is the ultimate solution to all of our spiritual warfare issues. Keller says we have to be possessed by Christ, right? Allow Jesus to fill up your whole inside. Don't just clean up your house. Don't just get your fitness act together, get the quote unquote self-control to eat the way you want to eat. Don't just like master your addiction. No, no, no. You have to be filled with something else, Otherwise, there's room for it all to come back with more. And some of you have experienced that. I know you have. I think I did. It's like I talk about in my book, Compared to Who. If you haven't read it yet, go check it out. But it's another Keller concept from way back when. But he talks about, he actually quotes Sir Thomas Chalmers, who talks about the power of a greater affection, So it's when you find something you love more than your addiction or your problem or your body image or the number on your scale, when you find something that you love more, the other fades, the addiction fades, the power of whatever it was that had a hold of you fades when you find a greater affection. So what would it be like to be possessed by Jesus for him to be your greatest affection for him to own you, right? Possession sounds like evil and scary. <laughs> but but what if he really owns you? Like the New Testament talks about like we are slaves to Christ. Paul says I'm a slave to Jesus, right? I'm a slave to his righteousness. Like I want to be all in. I don't want him just to be my savior. I want him also to be my Lord. Oh friend. That's how we gain victory over the enemy is when we are completely infilled by the Holy Spirit, when we're able to see the world through the lens of his kingdom, right? When we're able to see the darkness from the light, and we're only able to do that through the Holy Spirit's enlightening, through the Holy Spirit's help. 
that's when we gain the victory. But friend, I want you to be victorious. I don't want the enemy to have any kind of foothold or stronghold or influence or voice in your life. I want to see you be free. Hey, if you're struggling, let's let's do coaching together. Okay, let's let's get you into the course and coaching. Let's put you on a different path. And if you need more help around this, you can feel free to just drop me an email, Heather at compared to me. Well, I thank you for listening today. I hope something today has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye bye. Hey, friends, I'll be at the In His Image Conference this October in Dallas, Texas. Will you be there too? I hope so. Check out the link in show notes and I hope to see you there. The Compared to Show is proud to be part of the Life Audio Podcast Network. For more great Christian podcast content, go to lifeaudio.com.